Hi Stephen, you said a couple of weeks ago you were fed up speaking about Alan McGregor, but when he keeps making saves like that, then I suppose you're going to keep getting asked about him. Just can you sum up his performance again at a vital moment in the tie? Yeah, I thought there was a few real big pivotal moments within the game, uh, opportunities for both sides to win it. Obviously, Alan's came big for us again and um, to top, top save to, to get back and drag that back in, into his grasp was was another world-class save. And obviously, Connor the other end has a, has a big chance to maybe go and um, put us in front. But I think at this stage, um, it's always important, especially when you're away first, to try and take something from the game. And so obviously, getting away goal and um, to get back in the game is, is a huge positive. Um, we'll have a, obviously a lot more quieter week to, to rest and recoup and um, it actually helps us not having a game at the weekend and we need to be at our maximum both physically and technically next week to get this job done but we're, gonna, we're up against a real good side. You could see tonight that why they're at this level as well. Michael Grant, please. Hi Stephen. At, at the goal, were you, were you pleased with the uh... Yanis's determination to keep the ball in and, and even Hilander's gamble, I guess, on, on running. Yeah, I think one, when we analyse this team, uh, one of the areas we, we see opposition teams getting some sec, some success was, was from set plays. Um, it was a decent delivery. Um, obviously, um, it's about who reacts the quickest, who's switched on, um, who wants to gamble, if you like. And Yanis has gambled. He's done ever so well to drag it back. You'd expect the one of your attacking players to run through the goal and score. But it was big super Phil, uh, the prolific centre-half from Sweden. And um, we managed to get back in the game. Um, and I thought, after a sloppy start on the balance of play, I think that was what we least deserved. David Edgar, please. Hi, Stephen. You spoke about the emotion um, of the weekend, uh, the fighting spirit of your players to come here, a, a place that, that has been notoriously difficult for, for European teams and come away with such a creditable result must make you very proud. Yeah, listen, at this stage, it's very difficult to get results. I think you've only got to look at Scottish history to, to be aware of that. Um, we're coming up against a team with a fantastic home record, um, unbeaten at home. Uh, domestically unbeaten so we knew the challenge was really big we knew we were going to play against a real powerful team who liked to play at a high intensity um, so we needed to be ready for that but after the week we had and preparation wise it was quite tough but credit to the players they roll the sleeves up they dug in and after a, a slow start where we were a little bit second best um, the players performance was really really positive from my point of view and um we, we've put the tie in a real good position and that was always the game plan before the ball was kicked was can we set it up for Ibrox next week because we know we're a real strong team at home. So um, really looking forward to that game as well. Andrew McLean, please. Is that maturity from the players not to panic when things weren't going your way at the start, something that's really built over the last three years in these European games? Yeah, listen, I think it, it's a combination of things. We've got good experienced players. Um We've been there before when we know we haven't got off to the best of starts, but we've got good players. We've got a good group of lads who don't play with any ego. They stick together and they don't give up. And one thing you can never fault this group for is, is fight, is effort and application. Um, so, again, we got out of the game what we deserved. Chris Jack, please. Hi, Stephen. Just to go back to Alan McGregor, how, how much confidence does that give you that he can still be here next season? If he's still performing at that level, he must want to you know, keep going himself. Listen, I, I don't have to have confidence. I, I know that anyway. Um, I've spoke about it before, how much we we rate Alan, how much we love him here, how much we want to carry on. Uh, at the same time, I told you guys I'll respect him. Um, he knows what's on the table. Um, he's in discussions with the club and um, from where I'm sitting I just hope we get it over the line and, and sign him up for another year because he's more than capable and I know that on a daily basis by working with him and watching him close um, the decision is going to be down to Alan not us because we we certainly want him Hi Stephen well done tonight just yes. in the back of the, the, the start of the game you must have been really pleased with the kind of resilience of the team could it, under a wee bit of pressure to begin with could he easily kind of fold him the team didn't do that no, I, hopefully we, we never do that. I never want it, uh, any of my teams to fold, for sure. You can't do that, especially at this level, because teams will uh, make the most of that. And it's a real cruel level if, if you think you can down tools or fold. So 
it was a difficult start. I thought we waited for this game in the opening periods. I thought we were second best in certain moments. You know, part of that's on me as well. Um, because once we we tweaked it and went two up front and one number 10 behind and we made it about their defence rather than our defence, I thought that gave us confidence and belief and we settled into the game. And then from that moment, after going down, I thought we were more than worthy of at least a point.